we have uh, founder and CEO uh, Ryan DeLaramie uh, with us now. He's going to uh, talk in a little bit more context uh, around uh, Teleview and what you just heard from Dr. Wolf. Uh, Ryan, uh, please uh, uh, come on uh, the uh, virtual podium and uh, let, uh, tell the audience a little bit more about yourself and, and uh, what Teleview is all about. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jerry. Uh, good day, everyone, uh, wherever you are. And uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of uh, uh, explain and uh, talk a little bit about uh, Dr. Worf's experience and put it in perspective from a clinical sort of uh, a different clinical lens. Uh, and uh, what you heard from Dr. Worf's experience is uh, really uh, expandable to other uh, clinical uh, areas. And that's really what I want to uh, focus on and talk about. Now, let, let's talk, let's a little bit uh, think about what Dr. Worf uh, put out there for us. So first he stated the problem. The problem in his case was uh, infant hydrocephalus, uh, which is a medical condition. So we're not gonna focus on, uh, uh, on that. So let's call it a medical condition. And he talked about standard of care and how uh, standard of care is using shunts in this case uh, to drain the excessive fluid. and uh, and as you also heard, there is a bound to be failure of the shunt over time. And this is causing complications and potentially uh, 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 life dependent uh, com com complications. So, and uh, the patients are uh, shunt dependent in this case. And you also heard from Dr. Uh, Orff that some of these revised treatments are urgent and complex and could lead to, uh, uh, to have fatal outcomes. So that was the, the, the issue here. So let's talk about the, the solution. So the solution that Dr. Worf offered here is that a new technique. So he has a new technique uh, that uh, uh, could potentially prevent the patient from being shunt dependent. And this in turn potentially prevents the patient from needing complex surgery. Uh, the endoscopic third ventricostomy uh, plus uh, the choroid plexus cauterization that he mentioned uh, sounds complex and it is complex. And the reason I mentioned that is that not everybody can do this procedure. So what you heard also from him that they've been going to these uh, different countries and trying to train surgeons on how to, do, how to do these procedures safely and effectively. So obviously if you're in Boston, New York, Toronto, these are not a problem. You just uh, 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 call somebody into the room, then they can help you, uh, whether it's your mentor, your professor, or whoever, or your colleague. But if you're uh, 5,000 miles away, as Dr. Work was uh, mentioning, then that's not as easy to, to handle. And up until now, the, the solution was to uh, be physically present in the room, work with the surgeons, as you heard, taking them away the, from their practice, bring them to a different country, train them, and so forth and so on. So access to experts and mentors on a regular basis uh, is really the issue here. And uh, so that's that's a second problem. So. Uh, now that you have the solution, which is great, like I said, for big cities, what about uh, those uh, remote areas and, uh, uh, that don't have access to these experts? So this is where Teleview comes in, and uh, the solution that we offer is, uh, is meaningful. Uh, so uh, as you heard from Dr. Worf again, uh, so he also explained that when using our technology, which again, just to reiterate the technology, so we offer a couple of things. One is the smart glasses, again, as you heard, which is going to give you a point of vision feed from the frontline user's perspective. So Dr. Worf in Boston, uh, his mentee in Cairo, for example, they're wearing the glasses, looking at the patient. So Dr. Worf is exactly seeing what they're seeing. Also remember uh, what was mentioned that uh, it's as if you're standing in the room, because in a case like this, uh, the mentor is really not doing hands-on procedure. So the surgeon is capable of performing the procedure. What they really need is guidance every now and then to say, hey, this is the right place to, to go to. This is the right anatomy. This is this, this is that. So that's really the extent of uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the mentorship that is required. And with Teleview, you can actually do that. So as if you were standing in the room, because it's important to take that virtual hand in our platform and pointing on this uh, uh, to, to where on the patient's body or the anatomy that you want to highlight or draw on that uh, uh, image or share an image that you have to show the 
uh, frontline surgeons say, hey, this is what it should look like. So they can have an idea of what to follow as opposed to explaining it over the phone or using other modalities. So that's a very important uh, point uh, that I want to make that it, using our technology, it's just like you're in the room. You're virtually scrubbed in with the other surgeon in the room and doing it all from 5,000 miles away. And it doesn't really matter if you're in your office or you're at home. Uh, so you could do this. Now, this also, as you heard, uh, uh, typically took uh, a few days of uh, the mentor's time, a week or so of travel. And uh, this could uh, lead to, let's say, they do a couple of cases a day. Let's say that's 10 cases uh, during that week that they're there. Now, in those 10 cases, uh, typically an hour long or two hour long, hour and a half, uh, they don't really need the mentor for the full duration of the case. They only need the mentor for like a few minutes there, a few minutes here. So you can imagine how much time is saved using this technology. So you don't really need, you're not really tied into that whole case. You just step in and out of the case, if you will, in the room as, as you're needed. So, and uh, the, the effectiveness of this technology has, uh, uh, has been so good that, uh, uh, as you heard from Dr. Worth, it's going to be a centerpiece of, of what they're going to do. And uh, very importantly is uh, also you, uh, you heard uh, uh, the mentor mentioned this, that it was so easy to use and so easy to learn. So it only took him 30 minutes to master the interface, which is critical. Because if you think of it as a healthcare professional, you do not have the time or the patience to muck around with technology. You want something that is easy, intuitive, and effective. So it's, it really comes down to that. And if we're thinking about uh, the aspects of this technology, who, who benefits from this? So let's think about it from a patient's perspective. So we have a patient that otherwise, let's say a shunt dependent patient, if they had a complication without Dr. Worf being available right on, uh, on time, it could lead to fatal uh, sort of outcomes. So one, you're potentially improving the outcome of the case by being available on a timely manner in a meaningful, uh, interactive uh, uh, way. And so there's less experience uh, uh, on, the, on the front line that could be enhanced by the mentor's experience instantly. So you're transferring knowledge, transferring experience uh, uh, instantly. So, and for the patient, again, care closer to home. They don't need to travel. They don't need to go anywhere. It's right uh, in, their, in their own hometown potentially. Uh, from a mentee's perspective, again, you heard that the mentee has to travel back and forth and they are away from their work, they're away from their patient. And remember, these mentees are also physicians. They're taking care of other patients too. So if they're away from their work, there are patients that are being left out potentially untreated. Uh, and they're training on their own population of their patient, which is very important because there's certain uh, intricacies or, uh, about a certain population that you need to learn about those as opposed to coming to a uh, a different country and learn about those patients. And this builds expertise and capacity locally and uh, gives them a sense of independence, if you will, at that, at that stage. And from a mentor's perspective, that's obvious. You're, you're away from home uh, uh, work at, if you're traveling and you heard uh, Dr. Werb is away like uh, weeks at a time or uh, a week at a time. And uh, when you're away, you're not treating your patients back home. So with this technology, you save that time, you treat more patients, and you, frankly, you spend more time training others as well locally. So uh, uh, Dr. Werf is a professor at Harvard Medical, and uh, obviously he's got fellows, he's got uh, other people that rely on him for, for his expertise, so he can now provide that with the additional time that he has uh, saved in here. Now, Take all of this and what we heard about a very complex sort of procedure about hydrocephalus and uh, on, on infants and uh, expand it to other use cases. So it doesn't really matter if you're doing a, a, a brain surgery or if you're doing wound care. At the end of the day, if you're doing hands-on procedures and you need expert advice, this technology can help you. So the frontline user can now rely on an expert and enhance their knowledge base just like that. So whether it's wound care, for example, uh, a lot of these remote areas and rural areas, uh, patients have wound, complex wounds and there's not enough expertise locally to deal with that. How cool is that, that you can quickly call a wound expert, get them on the line with Teleview, 
get the guidance that you need to treat the wound, clean the wound, uh, redress the wound, or whatever the case may be. Uh, an EMS in the field, they need to they need help uh, on intubating the patient. Same thing, boom, put the telephone glasses on, get the help you need. Interventional procedures, all these different type of hands-on procedures, it applies to all those. And even interactive diagnostic imaging, think about uh, ultrasound imaging, echocardiography, um, uh, nowadays even point of care ultrasound uh, images that people now could do uh, perform a procedure without having uh, a lot of expertise, knowing that an expert is looking over the shoulder virtually using this technology. So I just want to leave you with a couple of things. You know, we, we talked about this uh, in, in previous uh, sort of sessions that I've had here uh, at, at HitLab. Like, some of the characteristics of a good digital health platform or a good virtual platform is that they got to be patient-centric. So, and you saw from uh, uh, from this presentation that is this uh, this te technology is absolutely patient-centric. It has to be easy to use and intuitive, which you heard it is. It has to be flexible. It's just not just a surgical pre pre pro pro procedure. You can use it for wound care. You can use it for ambulance transportation. You can even use it for primary care. It's safe. It's effective, it's efficient, and bring, it, it, it gives easy access to care. And again, right, patient in Luanda, patient in Cairo now has access to top-notch medical expertise from Harvard Medical instantly. And obviously, timely uh, access to care is important. Uh, timely decision-making, uh, clinical decision-making is important. And at the end of the day, it has to be affordable and scalable. Because if you have a very expensive technology, and it's only used in certain centers, that's not going to be of uh, use. So this is where uh, Teleview kind of checks all these boxes. And again, our uh, goal is to bring access, access to care and equity uh, to, uh, to, to all, really. So uh, and uh, with Teleview, it's like you're always there.